All right, you caught me. Uh, I don't actually play the guitar. I'm just kind of messing around on this thing here. So this is this week's video and I'm Darlington Farm. Uh, yeah, so this week going to be refinishing this uh, Fender Jazz Bass knockoff I found at a local pawn shop. Should be a fun project. Uh, real quick here, if you are new to my channel and would like to stay up to date on woodworking and welding content, please click the subscribe button down there. There's also links to uh, my uh, Facebook page, my Twitter page, and Instagram page for Darlington Farm. So if you'd like to keep up to date on what's going on, uh, just check that stuff out. All right, first thing we got to do here is go ahead and pull off the strings. Now, if you ever owned a guitar, you'll know how to do this. Uh, the rest of the disassembly, all you really need is a Phillips screwdriver and a soldering iron. Uh, you really shouldn't be intimidated at all by this. Uh, it's really just simple. The only thing you need to watch out for here is after you remove the four screws that hold the neck on is as you're taking it out of there uh, that you just don't split the wood uh, where the neck goes in. Um, it is kind of a pressed fit. Now the solder joints here coming up are really simple. There are only four of them and uh, you know pretty much any sort of cheap soldering iron should be able to do this. Uh, you just need to heat it up and then pull the wire off. Um, it's just a signal wire and the shielding for each one of the pickups. Not anything at all you should be intimidated by. And now as far as stripping goes here, I started off using a Mercosuros with some 180 grit paper. Um, just you know, kind of slowly started going over it and then I got to the point where it was taking too long. So I decided to go ahead and grab the big poppy here, which is the Festool. RO150. Now this thing is a beast. I have used this to strip the floors in an entire house and it will keep up with a big drum sander. It's crazy fast. It does an amazing job for stuff like this. A little overkill but it did this in no time flat. Because the, uh, the green finish that was on there was around an eighth of an inch thick. It was really thick kind of plasticky and just nasty looking so it really ate that uh, finish without, uh, you know, without really any trouble at all. And on the edges of this thing, what I did is just took my uh, Ceros here and just kind of worked the edges down, trying not to leave any flat spots and just kind of keep the sander moving so it didn't, uh, you know, leave any big marks or anything like that. And then up around the neck, I don't think I took any video of this, but. I used a, a rasp to clean out the uh, really tight radiuses there. Now this is denatured alcohol and I'm just going to give a little squirt of the uh, trans tint here into uh, the alcohol. And then just take it from there and stick it straight in the spray gun. There we go, it's trans tint green, uh, which is uh, it went into the uh, you know Precision 5 uh, turbine here. And I sprayed this on very, very lightly. I was running about 6.5 PSI. Had it had the uh, you know the gun turned down about as low as it would go, so I could put a very light, even coat on the guitar body here. After I got it on there, I decided I did not like the look of it, so I went ahead and well, I mean, you need since the alcohol is water-based, it will raise the grain, so you need to sand it. But then to kind of give it a little more depth, what I did here was I took some uh, general finish. Uh, Van Dyke brown glaze which I just had a can laying around and took a paper towel and just kind of worked it into the grain uh, of the body here and since the body is ash it has some nice big pores it really pulled in that glaze and then after I got the glaze on there I went back with some 400 grit paper and very very lightly sanded uh, the finish here just to try and knock off in as mu a little bit uh, of that glaze from the flat areas but yet leaving it in any sort of recessed areas like in the grain any marks or anything like that it left in there and kind of gave it a really nice depth that I don't think you could have gotten if you used like a stain um, if, if you just took like a stain and wiped it on like this I don't think you would have gotten the same sort of uh, effect like the glaze like that is really nice if you want to like make the grain pop and something like that. Now after I did that what I'm doing here is I am just spraying on another light coat of that green. Actually I think I ended up using two coats, I just not, didn't video the whole thing, but two coats of the green here and uh, you know just to kind of give it a nice, nice color. Now I picked up this trick uh, from watching some videos on the internet. You just take the guitar body, put it down on a piece of cardboard, trace it out, and cut it out and use some screws to offset it. And then 
when you're painting the sides here, uh, just spray down at about a 45 degree angle. And this is General Finish Lamp Black uh, Milk Paint. It's one, of, it's one of the things that I love using. And uh, again, spraying it on very lightly. And as you can see there, it gave a really nice effect. Uh, and for the top coat here, I'm spraying on uh, General Finish Enduro Clear Poly, which this stuff is awesome. I used that when I had a cabinet shop and just sprayed, you know, gallon after gallon of that stuff. It's awesome. Uh, now for the neck, what I decided to go ahead and do is use some tongue oil on it. And no, that is not sandpaper in that. That is uh, Festool Viley's, uh, which instead of being sandpaper, it's kind of like Scotch-Brite, um, kind of a soft you know, Scotch-Brite, which is really nice for polishing off, uh, you know, tongue oil uh, and you know, kind of burnishing it into the uh, into the wood. Uh, reassembly there, pretty much identical to disassembly. I um, just happened to use the uh, Festool uh, C15 um, just to kind of speed it up. And uh, oops, yep, there I did it. I, uh, I forgot to run this, the wire that goes back to the bridge um, before I put the pickups in. And um, yeah, just ended up having to go back, taking them out and uh, rerun the wires there. And as you can see here, it is actually really easy to reassemble the uh, uh, the pick or the electronics for this. Like, once again, you just need a soldering iron. I did have to re-solder some of the joints here just because there wasn't much uh, solder on the wires, but you know, really an easy thing to do. And uh, yeah, it's uh, all back together at this point.